It's been two weeks since the whole thing started. It all started with a tanker accident. It was all over the news. Everyone thought it was just another oil spill. There were plenty of volunteers. Plenty of people wanting to help the poor defenseless animals. Plenty of victims. Within hours of the tanker accident, it started happening. The animals had gone crazy. They were scratching and biting the cleanup volunteers. They said that was an adverse effect on whatever was in the tanker. Rescue workers are still trying to get the crew out of the ship. They could hear the screaming inside. Screams to open the doors. But that's when it all went to hell. As soon as they cut the doors out. There were six minutes of broadcast before it went silent. Six minutes of screaming and agony. The ship crew attacked the rescue workers like they were rabid baboons. Breaking bones and tearing flesh. The people on the shore weren't faring any better. Those who had been attacked by animals were attacking everyone else. It was worse than any war zone report. It was sheer brutality. And yet, the broadcast still went on for six minutes. Six minutes, and then blank faces. Nobody could explain what was happening. They tried to continue the regular news, the economy, the weather, a cute human interest story. But they couldn't make us unsee what we saw. I tried to continue with my regular existence, but every time I switched on the news or walked by a newsstand, it was there. This big mystery. They had some explanations, some kind of infection, brain parasites, but it doesn't matter. It wasn't an infection that we were afraid of. It was them. Four days after the initial report, a state of emergency was raised. And yet, we'd seen all of this before. Every zombie movie ever. People didn't know who to trust. People were stockpiling food and weapons. Some tried to flee, but it seemed every zombie movie was right. They didn't make it. Three days later, they arrived in my town. I expected moans, shuffling corpses, disembodiment. But that's where the movies lied. They ran through the streets, screaming. I remember running to my front door as fast as I could, locking, barricading, doing anything to make sure that I would stay shut, and then I headed for the window. I was on the second floor and I could see the carnage. They were unstoppable. They were aware. A group of them made their way through a building across the street. They jumped straight through plate glass windows. Even the shards slicing through them made no difference. They just kept coming. My barricade wasn't going to hold. I rushed around the flat, grabbing supplies and jamming them in the most secure room of the flat. I went back for one last look across the street. And I wish I hadn't. In the second story window, my face met one of theirs. They knew where I was. I quickly dashed into my room and locked the door. I don't have any kind of panic room or a secure room. So the safest place I could think of was my bathroom. No windows, one room with a lock. I had filled my sink and bathtub full of water so I could stay here for a while. So I sat there in the dark room with the distant screams in my ears. I began to feel like I may have overreacted. It had been two hours and no sign of them. It actually got quieter and I thought that they had moved on. Maybe I can leave the room, go to the kitchen, grab some food and wait it out. A crash came from the front door, the sound of someone running full force into the door and knocking down the barricade behind it. There was a couple more crashes before I knew they were inside. Rabbit footsteps moving across the flat, a couple of screams and then a bang on the wall beside me. My eyes were open at their widest, even in the pitch black darkness of the room. Another bang, and then another. They knew I was there, and they knew I was scared. This was the zombie nightmare I had been expecting from the start. I had nowhere to run. There was only so much time before they would break in. I sat with my back against the door, hoping my extra weight would make it harder for them to get in. And then, it got worse. Why don't you open the door? A voice on the opposite side of the door. No screams or moans, just a quiet, a spree voice. 
and then more of them. We've come for you. You'll be happier if you open the door. It's not so bad. Whispery voices became a cacophony of noises trying to persuade me, to break me, to fool me. I had heard that the moans of zombies would drive people insane, but this was worse. A siren call. I sat in the darkness in hope and prayed that they would get bored. But they don't get bored. And they don't leave. I managed to use a mirror to peek under the door, only to be greeted by horrible, unblinking eyes, blood-smeared faces, screams, and more horrid whispers. That was two days ago. I don't know what to do anymore. Maybe it won't be so bad.